Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 1st meeting of the Rochester Planning Commission. And uh, I would ask the uh, deputy clerk to call the roll. Sienna. Uh, McGee? Here. Vice Chair Lord? Here. Mayor Bixon? Here. Council Member and Secretary Bavacqua? Here. Clark Martin? Here. Gasson? Here. Here. Did you get me? Christian? Here. <laughs> um, Commissioner King is excused. Stone? Here. Gasson? Here. There you go, David. You have a quorum. Thank you very much, John. Tiana, while you're at it, why don't you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. Two seconds, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. At this point, uh, this is for the members of the public who might be viewing on community TV. Uh, again, this meeting uh, will be held in a virtual fashion. Uh, there are still no meetings at City Hall. And uh, as a result of that, we're meeting here on Zoom tonight. For those watching on television, you see a telephone number displayed at the bottom of your screen. If you'd care to join us uh, to comment on any item on the agenda, feel free to call that number. You'll be connected immediately with Siana, and uh, she will, at the appropriate time, connect you so that you can speak directly with the planning commissioners. With that, uh, I also want to comment about our new badges. And thanks, Siana, for going to the uh, trouble of having these made. Uh, the mayor is uh, looking for his or wishes to. Uh, but thank you very much for doing this. These will come in handy when we get back into meeting in, uh, in uh, close and personal in real life in the city council chamber. I uh, hope everyone's healthy and your families are healthy. I hope you've been, uh, if you've had access to getting a vaccine shot, go ahead and do that. I, I told you back in uh, probably or uh, October, November, that I was in the Moderna trial. And uh, I had to go down last week and I was unblinded. And that means they, they told me whether I got the, the vaccine or the placebo. And I actually got the vaccine. Oh, so good. I had the two shots in August and September. So I wish you all uh, good health and uh, hope you're able to find them as well um, uh, when they become available. Number three is public comment. Sienna, I ask if you have any written or uh, in-person communication from the public. I have not received any public comment. Okay, thank you very much. The next item is number four, and that's approval of the minutes of the regular planning commission of January 4th, 2021. Commissioners, if you've had the opportunity to read and review these, uh, we would uh, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Been moved by Mr. Stone. Do we have support? Support. And supported by Mr. Lord. Moved and supported. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, Sienna, call the roll, please. McGee? Here. Yes. Lord? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Bavacqua? Yes. Clark Martin? Yes. Gasson? Yes. Hauser? Yes. Oh. Yes. Thank you very much. Number five is a public hearing scheduled for consideration of a request from A Condominium Management Incorporated for a site plan and special exception proposal for a general office space in a non conforming building located at 411 Woodward Avenue. Madam Planner, Vidya, how are you? Good to see you. I'm doing good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of the Planning Commission. 
The applicant appeared before you for a preliminary hearing in January. So I'll just summarize the background of this case. The request is from Mr. Carey on behalf of a condominium management inc to operate a real estate office, which is classified by our zoning ordinance as a professional office within an existing building. The site is located on the south side of Woodward Avenue, just west of Oak Street, and is zoned R1, which is one family residential. We were before you for a preliminary hearing on January 4th, and we're given feedback to bring back some additional information and we're scheduled for a public hearing tonight. Now, the site is occupied by a 3,371 square foot, two-story building. At the last meeting, the last use of this site was discussed and it was previously used as a tutoring or a learning center. And it's also my understanding that there was a psychology office in the basement area. Both of those uses were non-conforming in the R1 district and not permitted. So now the applicant is proposing to purchase the property and use it as a professional office. Professional office uses are also not permitted in the R1 district. However, our zoning ordinance has got a provision where the planning commission gets to make a determination whether a proposed non-conforming use is of a lesser degree of intensity and therefore you would allow for the substitution of one non-conforming use with another use. And once such a substitution is made and the planning commission approves it through special exception, this now becomes a legal use on the property. Although it's located in a residential zoning district, the subject property abuts a non-conforming multi-tenant building to the east. I believe it has got three apartment units three tenant units in the building to the east, and it's got a public park parking lot to the west. The subject site also has got its own parking lot in the rear, which appears conducive to a non-residential use. At the last meeting, the owners of the property presented that this house throughout its history since the 1950s has always been used for non-residential purposes. It does not have a full kitchen or a full bath, both of which are critical for a structure to qualify under the state building code and under our zoning ordinance as a residential structure. So at the time it was built, it appears that it was never built with an intent to be a residential structure. It was built for non-residential uses and that has continued to all the years. The previous use of this property as a tutoring center would have generated significant traffic because tutoring centers typically work on set time and class schedule. So you would have students being dropped off by One their parents or guardians but... picked up again. So the amount of traffic such a use generated is not dissimilar to a daycare use. Professional office on the other hand, just has a limited number of employees coming in in the morning, working through the day and then leaving at the end of the workday. At the last meeting, Mr. Carey had mentioned that the, most of the work these days is done through Zooms and to virtual meetings. And on a rare occasion, a client actually shows up to the site. So the amount of traffic that will be received by the site will be significantly less compared to what has been receiving so far. We are certain of that based upon uh, the trips that the proposed professional office use would generate when compared to the previous uses on the site. With regard to vehicle access, I will pull up the site plan to share on this. With regard to vehicle access, there is an existing driveway that is coming off Woodward. It's 10 feet, 10 inches wide, which is okay for a residential driveway, but generally not a conforming size for a commercial use building. However, this is an existing non-conformity that is not being worsened, and it cannot possibly be altered. The applicant has got no scope for expanding the driveway because the building is to the east, and there is a fence line with public property to the west. Uh, the only concern this might generate was with regard to emergency or public access. We have spoken to the Rochester Fire Chief and he has indicated that even in the event of a fire, the fire department would never attempt to access the rear of the building from here. They would use Woodward Avenue to the north or they would enter into the public park area to the west to access this site. A fire department truck would never try to enter to the rear of such a narrow area building. So this is an existing non-conformity, so it can remain as is. You have the ability to make that determination. With regard to pedestrian access, the site does have a public sidewalk along its frontage, which is to remain as is. There is a sidewalk connector to the front door, which can be accessed by steps. 
barrier-free access will be to the rear entrance of the building where the parking is, which would meet ADA requirements. However, this barrier-free access would be subject to review and approval by the building official for compliance to prove. With regard to off-street parking, this was discussed at the last meeting, but we were unable to calculate parking because we didn't know just how big the building was. Now, professional offices require one space for every 300 square feet of gross floor area. So this is not uncommon in most ordinances. Gross floor area means the entire area of the building, including closets, bathrooms, mechanical equipment room. It doesn't matter. Exterior wall to exterior wall. Based upon that number and the size of this building, the site would require a total of 13 parking spaces. The applicant submitted two parking plan options. This is option one. This shows a total of eight spaces, including one handicap accessible space over here and a 22 foot wide right eye. Option two that was proposed was a total of 10 parking spaces, one handicap accessible space, and a 14 foot wide right eye. This plan is completely unacceptable. The minimum required width of a two-way traffic access drive is 24 feet. 14 feet is not adequate for a vehicle to make this kind of turn movement. If a vehicle were to be parked here and a vehicle parked here, they would essentially be stuck. There's no way to come in or out of that spot. So this is not a plan that we would advocate. It is not good planning, not good site design at all. Further, the site has an existing 10-foot wide driveway that connects to the rear of the multi-tenant building over here. Uh, that driveway is intended to remain as such and to provide for a secondary means. I don't think this is used as a primary means of ingress and egress to this site, but that will remain as is. So between the two options provided, option two is completely not an acceptable option. Option one, on the other hand, while does not have a 22 foot wide, 24 foot wide drive aisle, does have 22 feet, which corrects existing non conformity to it, brings it closer in compliance with the ordinance standards. With two parallel parking spaces proposed, this is a workable plan. Some municipalities do have only 22 foot wide aisle with requirement. Our ordinance has a 24 foot wide aisle requirement, so it is still non conforming, but Based on parking lot designs, this is not an unacceptable design. So our recommendation would be that the applicant pursue option one. Right now, this whole area is just a gent paved area with no striping. So the applicant will be putting the striping in actually to make it a functional parking lot. Even well, this is option one that we're looking at right now. Correct. This is option one right here. So option one is what you're looking at. And option one is more suitable than option two, which is not acceptable at all. Even with option one, uh, the applicant's site, there is a small typo on my letter on the top of page three, should be option one, not option two. Even with option one, the site is deficient in five parking spaces. The applicant in their letter had excluded the unfinished mechanical rooms in the basement from the closed floor area calculations. While I can understand the applicant excluding that because it's unusable space according to them, but our ordinance parking is based on gross, not usable. So it had to be included in the overall calculations. Although the site is deficient in spaces, it is still more compliant than the existing, than the former tutoring center or the psychology offices. Between those two, a tutoring center would not only have required spaces at the rate of one to 300, it would have also required drop-off and pickup spaces. The psychology office, on the other hand, would be classified as a medical use and would have required one space for every 200 square feet of closed floor area. So this site is way non-conforming now. It's got nowhere close to the required number of spaces. The applicant's plan to strike these spaces is actually bringing it closer in compliance with the ordinance standards to the extent feasible. While a private uh, building cannot use public parking as a consideration to provide on-site parking. They are required to provide all the parking on the site itself. The applicant does have two additional spaces available along Woodward Avenue to the north, on-street parking spaces. And in the rare event there should be the need, they can also park on the abutting public parking lot of the park. It's not something we are recommending. 
I'm mentioning it only so that the planning, if the planning commission has any concerns about parking becoming a nuisance in the residential neighborhood, that will not be the case. The applicant has areas available should the need arise. Uh, it's our recommendation that the planning commission accept the existing option one that has been proposed over here at this time, while not conforming to the ordinance, is still bringing the site closer into conformity to the extent feasible, and it's definitely reducing the degree of non-conformity of the site when compared to what the current uses of the site are. There is no loading space um, shown on the site. We do not anticipate that this site will require a loading space. In general, any deliveries through UPS or FedEx, I'm sure they just pull up onto the front road, uh, Woodward, and they will just drop off the packages. The applicant has stated the trash removal will be through the city's curbside trash pickup service. The site has a very well landscaped frontage along Woodward Avenue, which has been maintained. The site also has a row of evergreen uh, trees along the southwest property line. There are trees over here. And um, I'm sorry, there are two additional trees over here that help screen the parking lot from the abutting residential unit too. There are no changes proposed to the existing light fixtures on the site. There is a ball field on the park west of it, which has got ball field lights. Illumination from those are more than enough to illuminate the entire rear parking lot of the structure. So lighting for public safety will not be an issue. The existing two-story structure is an attractive building. It looks residential in appearance and it has been well maintained. No changes are proposed at this time. With regard to signage, there is an existing monument sign along an uh, elevated monument sign. Elevated monument sign basically means it's on two support pillars rather than a monument face. Uh, the applicant proposes to maintain the sign as is and only resurface it. The city staff and administration will review the sign for compliance to the sign ordinance size requirements prior to approving any permit. Now, the elimination of a non-conforming use is always recommended by the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. The ultimate goal of all zoning and community planning should be to take non-conformities for a period of time. However, it's not always possible to go the whole route of going from a completely non-conforming to a completely conforming site. Sometimes it takes place in steps and over a period of time. In this case, our zoning ordinance does have a provision, unlike some, where the planning commission does have the ability to make that determination and approve it. At this point of time, we believe, based on the information that is submitted and the proposed use that the applicant described at your last meeting, that uh, the proposed office use, its location next to a multi-tenant building and a park on the other side, is definitely a lower intensity use than the current psychology office or the learning tutoring center. So it is our recommendation that the Planning Commission grant special exception approval for the proposed professional office use, relocated at 411 Woodward Avenue based on the following findings of fact. The first one would be, the lack of a kitchen or a bathroom makes the structure non-viable as a residential dwelling without a major change to the floor plan and infrastructure of the structure. The structure has never has been used for a commercial or an office use since the 1950s. Proposed non-conforming use is of a lesser intensity than the learning center or tutoring center use. The location of the parcel between a public parking lot and a multi-tenant residential structure makes it suitable for the proposed use without having adverse impacts. Approval of this office use through the special approval process would now render the use as a legal conforming use. Such a recommendation for approval is subject to the following three conditions. It should be approval of ADA compliant barrier-free access by the building official, designing of the parking lot per option one, which is on your screen right now, and administrative approval of the proposed sign phase change prior to its installation. I would be happy to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. Thank you, Vidya. Uh, commissioners, you have uh, questions for the planner. Mr. Chairman, I have a, a general question, I think. David, please go ahead. For the <clears throat> special exception, it's been described as a use exception. And I'm wondering if there needs to be some other indication that it's also the site which has been addressed as part of this by the lack of striping for the current parking with a new scheme. And it's short by number and it's not compliant with the standard. 
Does that need to be indicated as a special exception in addition to the use? I, the motion is for approval of the special exception in order to make this a legal conforming use. And the second part of it is granting site plan approval. And I think as part of the site plan approval, when you're approving the parking lot for option one, can probably add language to it saying approval is being granted, acknowledging that the proposed option one design is also a shortfall of five spaces, however, is making the site more conforming. You could add additional language. But you're correct, Commissioner Gasson, you will be making a motion first for special exception, and then you would make a motion for site plan approval because they go together. I guess maybe more specifically, can we, as a body, approve a site plan that is non-conforming without it being an exception itself? I, I don't know how we do a site plan approval that doesn't conform. I believe I would defer to Jeff also uh, to pitch in over here, but I believe that authority is given to you under the provisions of section uh, 4043 and 406A. I think under those two provisions of the ordinance, when you make a determination on substituting one non-conforming use for another, the you can make a finding that even though the parking lot, as you stated, what they're proposing is non-conforming to ordinance provisions, it's being approved under that umbrella of allowing for substitution of one non-conforming use by another. Um, Attorney Kratt, would you would you agree with the, that statement, or is there anything else we would need to add to address Commissioner Gasson's question? No, I, I think I think you're accurate, uh, Lydia. I, I think that uh, what this section does is to allow the ability to grant the use, um, and even though the existing site is non-conforming. I think that that's what the special exception is doing, is doing both. It's accept, it's uh, it's granting approval of the, of, of the lessening, in this case, lessening of the non-conformity. Um, so I, and I, I would say one of the non-conformities that you're, that the special exception is, is addressing is the lack, or is the shortage of parking. So while that language certainly could be more clear to address specifically say, um, and all um, physical pro physical elements of the site. I, I think that that's, I, I would say I'm comfortable with the implication on that as well. So it's a shortage of parking and the width, width of the driveway as well, isn't it, Vidya? Yes. David, is that satisfied? As long as legally, uh, as the attorney stated, it's, within our purview to do that. I wasn't sure, that's why I asked. Uh, and I had two other things, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could maybe Please go ahead. the question. Um, so, so this is a use change in a lesser non-conforming situation. Future changes would only be permitted if they were to go the same route. We couldn't entertain a change in the future for a learning center again. Is, in my understanding, the how we move this to non-conforming more towards conforming, is that correct, Ms. Planner? Yes, that is correct, Commissioner Gasson. If at all, another transition has to be done, it has to be done towards an even lesser intensity use. And eventually the goal would be to turn this into a single family residential home. So they will have to, any next change will have to be actively towards that. They cannot go backwards and change this back into a psychology or a medical office or a learning equipment center. Or, or just added commentary, it could be rezoned to something to fit its current use, right? Not try to make it residential, I guess, somewhere in the future. I, I would assume it's more like that. Yeah, that's just a commentary. And then my last question or point I would like to hear something on is the drive that's indicated going to the uh, neighbor to the east. Is there something that needs to be provided to make that more formal than this drawing? Yeah. Indicate like a cross access easement or something that doesn't allow for an argument between two future owners of these two properties as neighbors that don't like what we're doing today? That's, that's a very good question, Commissioner Gasson. I would actually like the applicant to answer that. I'm not sure when or how the driveway came to be. 
and uh, who put it in and at what points of time, whether there is already a legal agreement between these two properties. I think the applicant will be able to answer that better. I'm hoping for the neighbor's own protection. They have something in writing, but that's definitely a valid concern which the applicant should address. Is the uh, applicant here? Who will, who will be speaking for the applicant? My name is Jason Carey, and I am here, but I believe the sellers of the property, the Millers, are also uh, logged into this meeting. I have not seen an easement agreement um, on this um, access driveway to the backside of the rental property. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Miller, is there anything of that nature, an easement agreement or any kind of agreement? There is an easement across the back, and there is an easement using the drive. 16 okay. foot by uh, the back. Okay. Is that a recorded yeah. easement, Mr. Miller? Like a legally recorded easement? Say again? Is that a legally recorded easement with the title of the property? Yes. Okay. I, Thank I you. would want to see that produced for the benefit of all the parties here. David, that's a good catch. Uh, I had brought that up last time and uh, we didn't take it to a conclusion. So I, I would suggest if we make a motion later that that be a condition of the one of the conditions of the motion. Any other questions for the planner? Okay, this is scheduled for a public hearing at 726 and I'm going to open the public hearing. And I'm uh, first going to ask Siana if you have any written or um, electronic communication from anyone, anyone on the phone who wishes to speak on this subject. I have not received any um, written nor electronic. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Nick, if I yeah, may. Um, so today I had a resident, a, a concerned resident, he called himself. Um, Want to make sure that the Planning Commission did not approve this if it was going to require the business to be able to use the park parking. They wanted their own, make sure the stand's on its own. They don't want that to bleed over like Dillman and Upton is doing across the street. Um, they want this to stand on its own and not need the required parking. So I told them I would pass that on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other communication? Hearing none, it's uh, 727 and we'll consider the uh, public hearing held and closed. Uh, back to the uh, Commissioners, at, at this point, uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, I saw I saw the attorney here earlier, uh, John Gaber. Are you here? Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. You uh, you want you have anything to uh, say for the uh, uh, for your client that you're representing here? Well, nothing, nothing really additional. I mean, the, your planner gave a very thorough, comprehensive uh, report of the situation. Uh, and we spoke last time, just want to point out you know, clearly that this is a less intensive use, both in terms of the, uh, the type of use being, being an office use as it is compared to what was previously used as you know, kind of a medical office and a learning type facility. Uh, and also there are going to be fewer people there than, than I believe there were previously. Um, and Mr. Carey, including himself, I think he has seven employees, uh, you know, some occasional uh, customer uh, traffic, but uh, that's very rare. So the, the need, we, we believe that the parking lot is going to be sufficient for the, for the need of the property, particularly with the two spaces in front that, uh, you know, guests may, uh, may utilize. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gaber. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, uh, back to you. Uh, any further comments or questions for any of the people present here? If not, uh, we would consider a motion. Who's going to... Okay. Daddy. We're going the, the the motion first is to approve the non-conforming video. Do I have that correct? Yes. Your first motion would be to grant special exception approval for the proposed office use to go into this building, subject to the findings of fact. Okay. Once you vote on that motion, your second motion can be for the site plan. Okay. So 
So I vote to, or I vote to move. to move to approve. Sorry, this is my first time doing this one, so I'm going to give this a Good shot. Right. <laughs> I move to approve the special exception uh, for the proposed for the proposed use. Is it okay, Mr. Chairman? Did I yeah, say that? David. I state that correct? Vidya, are you satisfied with that? Uh, may I suggest that uh, Ms. Martin's motion be continued to say she moves to grant special exception approval for the proposed use subject to the findings of fact listed in the January 25th, 2021 McKenna letter. Just so whenever you're doing stuff that <laughs> that's is- That's what you meant pertinent. to say, Patty, right? That's exactly what I meant to say, Vidya. Yep. Thank you for reading my mind. Yep, thought so. <laughs> Do we uh, first have support for that motion? Support. Uh, David has supported. David Gasson has supported. Now discussion on this motion. Dean, I see your hand up. Yeah, does that does that include uh, the requirement uh, to see the easement or have the easement produced? Video, uh, where should that be, here or in the site plan? In the site plan. Oh, sorry. Make it as okay. part of motion. motion. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion to approve uh, the special exception with the uh, findings of fact for the planner, Mr. Mayor. That then go to city council? Uh, no. I don't think this one does. We asked that the last time. The no. Planning Commission is the final authority on substitution of non-conforming uses. So Thank this you. would not go before the council. Thank we'll you. save you some work. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so it's been uh, moved and supported. Any other discussion? Sienna, please uh, call the roll. Clark Martin? Yes. Gasson? Yes. McGee? Yes. Lord? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Council Member and Secretary Bavacqua? Yes. Hauser? Yes. No. Yes. Okay, thank you. That has been carried. And uh, Patty, you want to continue with a second motion? Here we go. Yes. Um, I vote that we move to approve. No, I vote that we move to grant the site plan approval for the proposed professional office use at 411 Woodward, um, subject to the following conditions. The approval of the ADA compliant barrier-free access, um, the designing of the parking lot for option one. We're correct on that video? Yes. And option uh, one, option one. Correct. Um, the it, uh, approval of the proposed sign phase change. Although there's a letter here, oh, okay. And then the um, indication of the, or the- Cross access easement agreement. Yeah, the cross access easement agreement. Provision of the cross access easement agreement by the, uh, the applicant. Yes, by Is the applicant. good? Yes. And in order to address Mr. Gasson's previous comment, maybe you could add a sentence saying that this approval is accepting all the physical elements as existing on the current site. Okay. Okay, Patty. Okay, to add that. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you for all the assistance. Well, you did a great job. This is a complicated. Support of that motion. The motion. Support. Uh, who supported? Mr. Lord supported. So we have a motion and support. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, David Gasson. David, please. I, could I offer a suggestion to the motion maker in support to add a comment as a condition that the owner acknowledge that parking in the public parking lot will not be a normal or expected place for them to park? And maybe there's a better way to word it, but some kind of footnote that that is not to be at some point assumed available for their business parking. Agree. Mr. Lord? Sure. Okay. So that is the complete motion. And any other discussion? 
Tiana, the roll call, please. Martin? Yes. Lord? Yes. Chair McGee? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. House member and Secretary Bavacqua? Yes. Gasson? Yes. Hauser? Yes. Stone? Yes. Very good. That's complete. Mr. Miller, Mr. Carey, uh, congratulations. Uh, we, we wish you all the best. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Commission. Thank you, Commissioners. I appreciate it very much. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, the next item is uh, number five, consideration of an ordinance amendment. The sections 404 and 406 of the Rochester Zoning Code regarding non-conforming uses. And this is uh, proposed to us by our attorney, Jeff Craig. Yes, thank you. Um, so fortuitously, uh, this is the, the same uh, uh, ordinance that we were just referring to. Um, Section 404, as Vidya had indicated for the, the previous project, is uh, this is pertaining to non-conforming uses. And when we were going through the ordinance, um, you know, one of the things that I, I don't I don't know the genesis of, of why the language uh, was in subsection three of 404, but the language um, um, would suggest or states that uh, the if a if special exception was granted for a lesser non-conforming use, then that substituted use would then be a considered a permitted use. Uh, it would no longer be considered non-conforming, even though it would otherwise be non-conforming, such as the case of, of 411 that we just talked about. They went from the, the current use to now a, a professional office, which is a lesser intensive use, um, but it was it also would also be a otherwise non-conforming use. So the ordinance itself did exactly you know what happened on the last application, which is now that that professional use is a per legal permitted use uh, for that property. And so it's considered now a conforming property. Correct. At that use. At that at that use. Correct. And, you know, we had discussion, it could never go backwards. Uh, for instance, it couldn't go to uh, the, the learning center again, because that would be another non-conforming use. And so we're, there's no, no longer a substitution of lesser non-conforming uses applicable to this property, because it's now no longer non-conforming. So it couldn't go backwards. It couldn't be substituted as of right uh, by, by any other non-conforming use. So it's that. So Fair to say, any any subsequent change would have to be a residential use. Correct, without a rezoning, like it was suggested, yes. uh, that would be that's accurate. It'd have to be residential, or it would have to take some rezoning effort. Okay. So what? So the proposed change in subsection three is would to would to still consider it to be a non-conforming use. So the substituted use in instead of making it a permitted uh, use, it would turn it, it would continue it to be a non-conforming use. The, the result of that would be that, uh, say that that use was uh, discontinued for whatever reason, or the building burned down, or uh, you know, another thing that would trigger having to bring something into, conform uh, into conformance with the zoning ordinance. That would then still require Treat, you know, to bring it into conformance with the underlying residential zone district. So that that would be a. Uh, I'm hoping that that that's a, a nuance that's not lost on planning commission. So it it is still beneficial to the city to still have that non-conforming use or that substitute use remain a non-conforming use. Um, so that that proposed uh, change. Would would change it from being a conforming use to remaining a non-conforming use, um, and then the other uh, the, the change to subsection four hundred six is that uh, this is kind of an odd um, provision in there uh, in the code, which says that if this use is um, approved by special exception, uh, a non-conforming like we did, then it would be deemed it would not be deemed a non-conforming use in this, in the district. 
Okay, and there's we've had uh, over the years we've had some discussion as to what that actually means. Um, so what we've uh, what we are proposing is just simply delete that that section. I think that that would be a uh, one of the um, I, I guess uh, more popular, uh, not because it's liked, but because more people who have looked at it uh, who have said, well, that's it means that if it was a uh, approved as a special exception use. For this property, the argument could be made that it would be a permitted use throughout that district. So throughout residential, for instance. So I, I think that that's, that's not probably a, a good interpretation, not because that's not what the language says, but I think that would lead to some awkward results um, that would be contrary to the elimination of non-conforming uses. Um, so by deleting that, that that's just doesn't become part of the equation when Planning Commission is looking at uh, substituting non-conforming uses in the future. You wouldn't have to worry about someone taking the position that that substituted use now becomes conforming throughout that district. So I, I think these are pretty non-controversial. I don't see that having downsides to them, which we like to consider what the downsides may be. I think it cleans it up and, and it takes away a, a bad argument um, or bad for the city argument uh, in the future. Um, by eliminating subsection, excuse me, section 406 in its entirety. Questions for the attorney. Avidia. If I may just add to what Jeff said, this discussion came up internally between us after the request for a canine training center at property on Albertson, because the interpretation of that would be if we allowed the substitution of that non-conforming use, if I read section 406, we know, like Jeff said, we know what the intent behind it was, but the way it was actually written, basically translated into saying, we can now have dog training centers by right anywhere in the single family residential district, which is not what we want or intended. So this was something we had decided at the time it needs to be cleaned up because if it is read by somebody differently, it will become an argument on semantics of how the language is worded. So the best thing is to remove 406, and with the substituted language that Jeff is suggesting under subsection three, it furthers the goal that Commissioner Gasson mentioned. The eventual goal is to get rid of non-conformity altogether and make this into single family residential by giving the applicant a path towards doing so. Not basically telling them, okay, now the property is legal, you can put it anywhere in the single family district. So I think this is a very essential and much needed cleanup of the ordinance. Dean. Yeah, and I do remember that that conversation. Um, I wasn't uh, acutely aware of the section that it, that you were referring to, but it, we're sure that this is the only place in the ordinance where um, you know approving a non-conforming use was being um, it was being inferred that that would be uh, con uh, confirmed and or. Uh, conforming and allowable throughout the district. This is the only place in the ordinance that that, that was found? Yes, yes. Thanks. So Mr. Chair, if I may continue. So if, if planning commission, since this is a zoning code, that's why it's here before you, before it goes to city council. Yes. So for procedurally, uh, what would happen is uh, if planning commission's wishes to proceed uh, with this ordinance amendment, a public hearing is required uh, at the planning commission level. So we would request that uh, that planning commission set this matter for a public hearing to consider uh, this zoning ordinance amendment. So just, just to be clear, what we did tonight made that property a conforming use in that district. The, the proposed ordinance would stop that in the future. Did we do anything tonight that created hazard for the city under the current ordinance language that could come forward where other people would ask for uh, office use in the residential district. Are there any other properties out there like this? Well, I, I, I can't answer that second part, but that, that is one of the questions that we, that we discussed is that, uh, you know, while we think that there is an interpretation that says that approving that uh, would be a, 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 a conforming use throughout the district. 
we don't believe that that is the intent of that um, of that ordinance. So I understand. So so kind we of like uh, remove opens new, Pandora's box. Correct. Yeah, we want to we want to remove that. Nick, argument. are there any? Uh, Nick, I'm I'm thinking about that. Uh, this probably doesn't apply with that house on university, and uh, I don't know if that's a Wilcox or whatever. That young man came in and wanted it changed. Yep. Okay. Are there other properties around like this one here on Woodward that? Uh, yeah, actually, it's funny you say that because today somebody came in and was closing on a home on Oak, which is zone B3. B3 does not allow residential homes in it. So there's probably more than a handful around town. Again, they, as long as they so, stay residential, they're fine, but they're not legally conforming. Okay. So it would be prudent to act on this fairly soon. Yes, sir. So, Jeff, what you need is, uh, well, let's ask the commissioners. Any other discussion on this? Do we understand it well enough to move forward? I think we do. Um, so we want a, a motion to set this for a public hearing at the Planning Commission at the next available meeting. Exactly. So moved. Okay. Who moved that? Uh, moved by Mr. Lord, supported by uh, Mr. Bavacqua. Any other discussion? The roll call, please. Lord? Yes. Bavacqua? Yes. McGee? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Clark Martin? Yes. Gasson? Yes. Hauser? Yes. Stone? Yes. Okay. Thank you all for catching that. Those are those are those little things that uh, um, get us into a lot of a lot of trouble. And uh, I'm I'm appreciative that you're on top of that and uh, catching them, both the staff and uh, and Jeff. Okay. The next item is uh, number seven, miscellaneous. Can I go uh, first? I, I will open the floor. Who is that? Can I go first? Oh, please do. <laughs> um, me and Dennis talked prior to the meeting. There is a steering committee for the master plan update on Thursday, this Thursday, February 4th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Um, it is our, I guess, direction to choose someone to accompany Dennis from the planning commission onto that steering committee. Uh, Mayor Bixton and Council Member Vavacqua are already serving on that planning commission. So I was hoping to get um, a volunteer. <laughs> so is there a commissioner other than myself and the mayor and, and Mr. Vavacqua who would like to join in this effort? I would love to do that, Mr. Chairman, unless someone else has a desire to do it. Anyone else? David, given your uh, professional and, uh, and civic experience, I think you'd be a tremendous asset on this. Yeah, committee. and David, I will send you the email that was sent to us from the Beckett and Raider team um, for this Thursday's meeting, and I will also send you the calendar invite so you can join the Zoom meeting as well. David, do you have a city email? I do, but I don't know what it is, Mr. Jim. It's okay, David. I will send it to your regular email. That I don't I know have. what mine is either, okay? <laughs> Good. I, I'm so glad to hear that because I've tried to open mine twice and failed miserably. <laughs> um, David, David, send, oh, uh, David, we appreciate that. Yeah, I will send it to you after this meeting. Wonderful. I look forward to it. Okay, thank you. Is the floor is still yours? Um, that is all I have, unless someone else has anything to contribute. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to number eight, public I, comment again. I have a miscellaneous item, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Oh, go ahead, David. Go related ahead. to Siona as well. I appreciate the name tag, uh, as uh, Mr. Chairman uh, announced at the beginning of the meeting, but I couldn't help but notice Attorney Crotts uh, badge, and I really like that one. How do I get one of those? <laughs> I know the city. I know the city has actually ordered those last year. Um, I did get one, um, not to rub it in, but I will um, 
talk with our finance team, which is the people who have actually ordered it, and I will put one in for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll reach out to you as far as what size you need. Jeff, describe what you have there. Is that a shirt or a? It, it, it is a it is a long sleeve zip up full uh, full zip up fleece. Wow! <laughs> with with the with the uh, city's logo embroidered on it, very comfortable and very warm and stylish. I'd, I'd appreciate Sienna if you brought that to the next meeting and. I, I definitely will. I will send out an email and uh, get you guys sizes and we will go from there. (laughs) How about that? Even if it requires a contribution from the members, I'd be happy to pay for something like that. Oh, yeah. I won't look as good as Jeff, but man, that's sharp. Well, (laughs) there are are a myriad of colors as well. I chose chose the burgundy. I have the blue. I have the blue. blue. Be available. (laughs) Blue, gray. Some people right. call that cranberry, Jeff. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the fashion forward people, I'm told, that would be that's cranberry. Right. Yeah, yes. That's right. uh, is that a special a color just for attorneys, or can anyone have it? It is, it, is not, <laughs> it, is, it is available to the common folk as well. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> common folk, really. Any other miscellaneous? Mr. Chairman, I have a couple. Uh, Go ahead, Nick. Um, so we had, I've had two meetings, and Blaine was in on one of them. With me, we spent some time with Joey Lechurko, his partner, and their environmental folks. Joey owns the former cement plant, and he has the now soon to be former Van Horn's parts place under option. Um, some of you will remember, I know Commissioner Gasson, and you might have been here, Mr. McGee, at the time uh, that we, uh, that city council turned down a special project for the repurposing. Of the cement plant, probably what like five years ago, we figured something like that, where you wanted to put up six towers of, of residential, and that was denied. So we talked about the future land use plan, the master plan, PICAs, lack of potential PICAs, proper underlying zoning, potential for a brownfield. I informed them that Monday night, city council will be holding the public hearing for the Randazzo property, which would be a key indicator as to the appetite for residential, especially in that area. So he's going to stay to that. Um, And I suspect that in the next two months, he will come in with the site plan, potentially rezoning to get the underlying zoning properly, and then design a site plan that would meet that underlying zoning. So he would do that on both properties? Right. He would combine them. He'd use one for water storage and then a park. And then uh, I think when he showed us two buildings, if I remember right, uh, that he would come in. So what is the uh, combined acreage there? Oh, boy, probably four or five acres. Okay. So, and then secondly, I met with the architects uh, this morning about um, the former Spartan Inn. So they also will be coming in probably for a conditional rezone, convert that to what they're calling affordable housing, take the units from 40 units to about 30, I think they're trying to work on, combine um, some of the hotel rooms and then Fancy it up a bit. So uh, they know the zoning be, would be to multifamily residents. Right to RM1, right. So they're uh they're looking at that process. So I suspect they said probably within six weeks they would submit for that. So a couple of things to look forward to. Sian and I reached back out to 210 diversion. Well, let them speak for themselves. I don't know that you're ever going to see that again. Um but we'll see. But uh certainly if they withdrew, that would make Mr. Lechurko's property get a different look if there wasn't somebody ahead of him with multiple family units on the same street. So. Might Lechurko fold that into his assembly? They asked him to purchase it, and he said he was not interested. Okay. So stay tuned. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other uh, miscellaneous or public comment? Nothing new, uh, Sienna, no more calls? or. We have not received any public comment, but I would like to piggyback a little bit on what Nick just said. The public hearing for the riverfront development is going to be on the city council meeting for Monday, February 8th. Um, I am more than happy, which I probably will do after this meeting is send you all the link to watch the um, city council meeting on Monday. If you'd like to tune in, you can. Please do, please do. Get past. Mr. Chairman, if I may, this is David Gasson. I have one other comment or question even on the 
the gateway property we heard from yep. a couple months ago, perhaps, and uh, progress has been made. And I've noticed um, something that I didn't had in my in my vision of what was going to happen. That metal screen wall um, is really a prominent elevation material, whereas I recall. In their presentation, it was going to be removed from the face of the building and pushed back and have some distance away. With, and they talked about it was going to be lit up and that kind of thing and maybe be a backdrop for signage. But the way it looks to me, um, and I didn't study it. It's kind of passed by it every day. It looks like a major metal siding material as a facade treatment to Main Street, which alarms me compared to what I really thought was going to happen. I don't know if anybody else has looked at it, but it's progressing to the point now that I think it's, it, it, uh, it concerns me how it's ending up. And I didn't have that vision of it when they presented it. Yeah. I, Mr. Chair, if I may, I, I too noticed it every morning going to Tim Hortons and I, I hate to say this, but I think that's exactly what they showed it to be because it is the backdrop for all the signs that, they submitted the first sign for the new clinic that goes up there, and it will cover up most of the metal, all the way they're doing it. But we, I will certainly get with Randy, the building official, look to make sure that is exactly what was approved by the planning commission. Um, but I, I never liked it to start with, but you're right. And I talked to the owner, and they've settled on a stacked line, a stacked um, like limestone, like at the BP, you know, the stacked yeah. stone. That's what they're going to come back with. He hadn't figured out the awnings yet, so that's why he didn't come back this so month. So the stack stone would be for the two walls where right. the, the – uh, the, right. uh, that, uh, Actually, that would probably look very handsome. But he, I told him, you got to come back one more time, not twice. So once he works out the awnings. But we will confirm that that stuff's being put up there, right, and the right depth of it and everything. So I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'll send you – I won't wait till next month. We'll get your memo out to the whole commission tomorrow. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? This is yes, Christian. With respect to the hearing on Monday at the uh, city council, I recall that one of the conditions was a development agreement. And is there any way to, if we could get that in advance of that hearing on Monday? Yeah, I yes, think that's Sam, I could send that to you. Yeah, it's in the packet. So it's in the packet. Okay, if it's in the packet, then I'll just pull it up. No worries to send it different. That's fine. I'll look up as soon as we hang up. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Sienna, number nine, upcoming uh, for the March meeting. I'm assuming by that that we will not meet a second time in February. No, uh, the second meeting is actually begin in March. Uh, they're March, April, May, um, okay. depending on the type of traffic that we get. Um, as Nick alluded to earlier in his miscellaneous comment, uh, 210 diversion um, possibly will not be on a March meeting as they semi withdrew, I guess. Um, as he stated, we will, um, it, I guess it's a, to be determined. So, <laughs> no, no, for a fact. Nick, right. do you Why? know if they own that property or they have it under contract? They have it under contract with Mr. Crane, John Crane. Okay, thank you. Why did they pull out? They, I'm not saying they, they I was told by Mr. Lechurko that they approached him and said it got too expensive, which they've had that conversation with me before, but until they officially write a letter of withdrawal, they're still technically hanging in the balance. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, uh, Gateway, Finner, um, they may or may not come back for March. Uh, we shall see. Um, like I stated, I mean, now we will definitely have the public hearing for the ordinance amendment um, on March 1st. Uh, if nothing else, we would definitely have that. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Yep, that is all I have. Does anyone else have any business for the Planning Commission? Uh, Dean. I guess I just have one follow-up question on the 210 project then, uh, maybe for Nick. When you say they, uh, you think that they feel like it got too expensive or you've heard that um would you uh suggest that maybe that's due to the increase in construction material cost or do, do we know because i've been hearing that that the cost for materials is going up uh yeah. pretty drastically I think, 
Yeah, absolutely. I think I don't think that's a key here. I think you saw a beautiful picture, a beautiful rendering. It was a complicated project. I, I'm sure as they price out things, even though they wouldn't start for two years, and who knows what the market's going to be like by then. They had not. When I talked to them last, it just got to be for the amount of units to spread that cost out was getting very difficult. So I'm sure that has something to do with it. But um, they just said when they were talking to Mr. Lachurco, and I, I asked him if it was okay to say this, and he said yes. That that just the overall project with the environmental and dealing with the hills and everything, it was getting a little out of their make sense range. I think they used. For, but again, I'm sure okay. they won't let us know, but I'm sure that's a big part because I've heard up to 38, 40 percent markups now, which is making some of these projects very difficult. Well, I, I think that's something we may have to discuss on Monday too, just just for folks here's uh, sake. Um, in terms of the the riverfront project, you know that thing that things uh, started over three years ago, and I got I, I I gotta believe that the change in in material cost over the last three years um, has to have changed the pro forma on that. And, um, you know, I, I, I'd be concerned about whether they're going to be in, in a position to complete it or not. I mean, it's a whole other subject, but just in terms of the, uh, the general discussion here, um, we'll, we'll see what they have to say on Monday, though. Those are good points. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we will see you at the next meeting, Mr. Mayor. Well, you're Good waving. Meeting. Just waving Good goodbye. Good night. This meeting is adjourned. We'll see you Thank Thursday, you. Dennis. And All right. Dave. See you then. See you guys. Good night, Thanks, guys. See ya. Good night. Good night. Good night.